Well, hi there, and welcome along to What's the Word in association with Labrooks. It's another bumper weekend on the racing front, both in Ireland and in Britain. We're going to come to the action later on in the show. There's super action at Wincanton and in Ireland. We have got Nace and Navin on Saturday and Sunday, and we've got some stars in action over those two days. But before we get stuck into the action, we're going to have our regular slot of quickfire questions. I'm Brian Shearer, and the first one is to you. From all the stable tours you've done and everything you've heard over the last couple of weeks, this, these are the weeks we get really excited. So everything you've heard, I want you to process it all, and I want you to come out with just the name of one dark horse for what's the word viewers to follow for the season ahead. Okay. Go well, for it. Just the three yards I was at was at Joseph's, Gordon's and Willie's. And I make it sound like, you know, getting paid to do this, as you said before. But uh, Willie was really sweet on a mare called Larky, Lark, La Marquise, I get that right. Apparently she done really good work at home at Clas Sutton. She's owned by the same people who own Classical Dream. And he almost had to kind of bite his lip when he was, he didn't want to say too much. He goes, mm. I don't want to say too much here because I, I might put the mockers on her. But she's a mare we really like. And I think she only ran once in Autoy. She was third in a hurdle race there. Didn't run at all last season because the ground wasn't right. So I think they have high hopes for her. And just uh, Gordon already gave us two bumper horses, Hamunderson and Pensiful of Lead. Pensiful of Lead won at Down Royal. Well done. done very well. And I think that Ham Anderson is going to be worth looking out for whenever he runs. Okay, now what viewers are doing there, they're wondering, what, what was the f name of the first horse he mentioned? So you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to spell it first. It's the <laughs> I hardest can job. spell it myself. L-A-M-A-R-K-I-S-E. La Marquise. La Marquise. That is Brian Sheeran's horse to follow for the season. And it's a bit of a dark one, so uh, put it in your tracker because you mightn't just see it among the entries. It could be one that could slip away. Okay, Brendan Brenda Duke, if given the choice, now you have to think about this, right? If given the choice... Would you rather attend Frankel versus See the Stars versus Enable in a fantasy Judmont International at York, or would you rather see Sprinter Sacra v Altior v Moscow Flyer in the Champion Chase at Cheltenham? I'd go for the Judmont. You wouldn't? I would, yeah, I'd get to see Frankel. Any chance to see Frankel? We're, right. we're into November now. Perfection in equine form. Okay, so you would happily go to see Frankel v See the Stars v Enable? Yes. That would be your, would that be like the best moment of your whole career in racing if you got to see those three races? Well, actually, I had the chance to go and see Frankel Studmont and didn't go. Uh, so, so yeah, that's uh, my my credentials. That's like a, not turning a, up to a date with Rachel McAdams or something. Well, indeed, my credentials as a true racing fan, you you, you could question them justifiably on the basis of but that. But Sprinter Sacra, Alti or Moscow Flyer oh, in what the a Champion race. Chase at Cheltenham. What a race! You find out the, who was the best. The Champion Chase is my favourite race in the National Home Calendar. So you did you did pick a brilliant race. There. Okay, so it was a tough enough question, but reasonably simple answer. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Nicola, your question is: After all the Cheltenham clues that were that were on offer at the Labrook sponsored Down Royal November Festival last weekend, who has been the best backed horse with Labrooks since those terrific two days? Well, it was a great meeting for Gordon Elliott. He obviously sent out seven winners, and I think the two really that jumped out was Sam Crow, who shot to favoritism in the JLT after that, cut to six to one from ten to one. Um, I suppose he didn't have a huge amount to beat that day, but he showed signs that you know he could restore his reputation. And then the other one I should mention is Envoy Allen as well, who became seven to two, very for the Bally Moore, who looked that was a really good performance. It was a great two days. We were delighted to sponsor. I hadn't been to Down Royal before. So uh, I'll be back. And you had the, the pleasure of myself and Aoife's company as well. I did. You drank the bar dry. Not yeah. Aoife, though. Well, no, not Aoife. <laughs> no, no, no. But Labrooks were done. Uh, OK, so let's move on to Saturday's action. And we're going to start off at Nace at 105. It is the popular square chase. It's a grade three race for second season novices. Now, we thought we might see Duke to Geneva here. He's actually running on at Navin on Sunday in the Fortria chase. So, Brendan Duke, we have to make do with this Silas Emery, mm. who has incredibly good form from one race at Goran Park last year. Yes, and was a very decent hurdler as well. He was up to about 150 over mm. hurdles. Uh, jumped really well in Goran. As you say, the form couldn't have worked out better. He was getting in towards favour for the Arkle when he was pulled out last year. And it's hard to believe, based on how that Goran race worked out, that he wouldn't have gone off close to favourite and that he did nearly gone and won the race as well. He's a, he's a very exciting horse. And just so, so viewers know, that Goan Park race in second was Impact Factor, who went on to be a pretty decent handicapper. Mm. In third was your racing post Arkle winner, Duke to Geneva. And in fourth was Expatriate, who's rated in the 140s. So 
as novice chase form goes, that's pretty decent. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, is he going to make a winning return? Yeah, well, he's probably the best horse in the race, and he's getting weight, uh, which hardly seems fair. Uh, the bookies w won't have missed those facts now, but uh, it should be a school and session. Won't be a Brendan Duke type price, I'd imagine. Will not be a Brendan Duke type price. But really? it could be a Brian Sheeran type price. Would you be getting stuck in at odds on in Silas Emery? It's kind of hard listening to all this, Brendan saying that he would have won the Arca, because I actually backed him straight yeah. away after that you race. You didn't, did you? And I, I promised myself, okay, no anti post bets last year. And never really work out for me and I really thought okay just this this was so good that I had to, to bend my rules and yeah he got ruled out obviously uh, look at I so just no anti-post bets this year well <laughs> that's gonna out the window already well <laughs> some 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 rare exceptions and he was one so I think he's gonna make a win in return I think he's uh, could be a class act over two miles over fences okay and Nicola for you obviously we're not quite sure what way the market is gonna form here but you know we've got a couple of pretty decent judges on the panel here and we all think he'd probably be odds on Will it be a horse that Labrox might be taking on? Uh, I doubt it. Um, no. But you did want some champion chase odds as well. I did. Um, so, of course, Altier is the favourite at 7 to 2. Um, after that, you have Sachon for Swat, 4 to 1. Bigger prices, Deppy de Sold, 10. Mins, 12 to 1. Duke de Geneva is 12 to 1. Who will see on Sunday. And if Altier does step up and trip, obviously, there's going to be a bit of a void left there. And if Silas Emery makes a breathtaking return to action, he could be a massive mover. So, like, I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you if you did fancy Silas Emery on Saturday, would Brendan Duke, would you advise somebody to have a little saver maybe on the, the champion chase market at Silas Emery? Have we a price, Nicola? 20 to 1. 20 to 1? I think that sounds fair. Because okay. you, you, you have, you, Altior is going to win the Gold Cup, so he won't be able to win the champion chase. Well, he probably could, but he, they won't ask him to. Yeah. Uh, and 48 with, hours. Yeah. With the Chacon Porsois as well, you, you always have these nagging concerns about him as an anti post proposition. So that sounds like a play to me, David. Excellent. So it is a ringing endorsement for Silas Emery in the 105 at Nace on Saturday, moving across the water to the 225 at Wincanton. It is live on ITV4, and it is at John Romans Park Holmes. Rising Stars Novice Chase, it's a grade two. And Nicola, I'm guessing that reserve tank is going to be very, very short here. Yeah, currently even money, but could very well go off odds on for this race. Although he was turned over at Chepstow in his chasing debut when going off his odds on favourite. So disappointed that day, but still very much a hot contender for the JLT and Arkel, where he's in there at 12 to 1. He was unbeaten before that um, all throughout 2019. So yeah, even money favoured. Paul Nichols, he's got a great record in this race as well. If you say run is second favourite at 7 to 2. But at a bigger price, I like Comanche Red, um, around 10 to 1. That could have actually shortened now since the decks. But he had a really good start over fences, I thought, at Warwick coming third. He jumped really well, and he likes when Canton. OK, so that's Comanche Red. One from left field for Nicola McGeady. Uh, Brian Sheeran, this reserve tank. Uh, Robbie Power, Sunday, big read, race and post. Let's Spent a couple of hours with Robbie uh, in his lovely house outside Summerhill on Monday night. And we came to reserve tank, and I said, were you disappointed at Chep, so beating at odds on? Um, well beaten in the end. He says, no, it's ground. He said, he needs good ground. That's why he's going to win Canton mm. on uh, Saturday. And he said, don't give up hope, because yeah. this is a proper horse. What do you think? Yeah, he's going to get his ground, as you said. And even he, the way he moved through that race, he took it over. Yeah, he liked it, yeah. I thought he jumped to the front. He just probably blew up, or mm. maybe, uh, you know, Pergo O'Brien's horses were flying at that stage as well. Jarvis played this in a bad little yardstick either. But I think we're going to see a different reserve tank here. I'd be very disappointed if he didn't win and go on to maybe something like a JLT. OK, so we've got a couple of shorties now. We've got Silas Emery and we've got reserve tank. Are you a reserve tank fan, Brendan? I could see he did run very free in fairness and that mm. may have uh, contributed to him, not yeah. his finishing effort and what have you. So I thought it was a middle and round of jumping though. Now again, maybe the ground was a factor there. He, he is an exciting horse, but I just at, at a short price off the back of that run, I'd be inclined to leave him alone. And I have a, an option straight away because Cobden is on the second favour. And if and doubt back Cobden, like when Canton's a proper jumping test, but I'd say he could jump up on me and get me around. The man's just a phenom at getting horses to jump. And this, if you say run, she done pretty well in her debut in Worcester. Wasn't a, wasn't a bad mare over hurdles. Wouldn't have been a million miles behind reserve tank. Gets the mare's allowance. And that's seven to two is perfectly fair. Now, I could be wrong here, but just reading between the lines there, you're a fan of Harry Cobden? Well, yeah, he's the best jockey in the business. That's a big statement then. Oh, in my opinion, in my opinion, whatever my opinion is worth, I mean, you know. I, you think he'd go right to the top? He's absolutely... Or is he at the top already? Yeah? He is absolutely incredible as a judge of pace, presenting horses at obstacles. It's just, it's, it, 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 it's not quite Ruby, because Ruby's a class apart, but 
He's he does some impression of Ruby. Mm. Really does. He does. On top of the game in the RSA last year, that was that was poetry in motion. So moving on to the three o'clock at Wing Canton. It is also live on ITV4. It is the Unibet Elite Hurdle. It's Grade Two. And it sees the return of Fusil Raffles, the grade one winning hurdler from last season. It's hard for these juveniles to come forward, Nicola, but how short is Fusil Raffles? Well, the race is cut up a little bit, but still clear favourite, 8 to 13, and looks like one of the most exciting hurdlers in training. What he'd done last year was unbelievable in the Adonis hurdle, then the Punchestown Festival, and I just can't wait to see him. Currently 12 to 1 for the champion hurdle, uh, and an impressive display um, on Saturday. We'll see those odds shorten up further. He's not going to have it all his own way though you've got Grand Sansi in there at four to one to he's looking obviously to redeem himself after falling at Kempton and then Christopher Woods in there at, at 13 to 2 now. Brian Sheeran did you see the interview with Daryl Jacob during the week where he was asked about Fusil Raffles? I didn't. Well he was on uh, Sky Sports Racing and he was asked about Fusil Raffles and oh my god he said the horse he said when he was riding out the horse in I, I can't remember what lot it was one of the days and he said he had to ask the girl leading out the horse. What, what horse is this? She said, that's Fusil Raffles. He says, that's not Fusil Raffles. He said the horse has turned inside out, straightened up, much more a specimen of a horse now, and he thinks you'll see a completely different horse, and he thinks he's a triumph hurdle contender. Is Daryl Jacob right? Well, um, a champion hurdle contender. What yeah. did I say? A triumph hurdle contender. Well, he was a major triumph hurdle contender last year. He was, year. yeah. I mean, was. That, that was one race I would have loved to see, Sir Eric and Fusil Raffles at full tilt, mm. but obviously... Sadly, we didn't get to see it. But for him to come back and win a punch of sound, uh, for a four-year-old, for having a stop-start season like he did, I mean, that must be, he must have some big engine. Obviously, he's had the experience of a couple of runs under his belt um, in France. I think he could be very good. I was asked for four, I think you were asked for them as well in the um, race and post annual for a few horses to follow, and he was one of them. I think uh, he could make the grade into the, into the champion hurdle sphere. I think, obviously, Classical Dream is a, probably a beast out of his own, but if there's one horse that, at a bigger price that I would be interested in, it's Fusil Raffles. Some very good four-year-olds have won this race. I think Well Chief is already up, So Royal for the same owners. So I think uh, it's not very original, but Fusil Raffles for me. It's a day for the shorties, Brendan. Um, this could be a little short price treble for the first three race we previewed. Silas Emery, uh, Reserve Tank, and completing the treble, hopefully, will it be Fusil Raffles? I thought he was hard enough to get away from. I mean, they're, they're almost always underpriced, these horses. But he, it's interesting what you say about Daryl Jacob said, because he is a horse with a big frame mm. to fill into. So if he started to fill into that frame, and he did look very good in Kempton. The form wasn't great, but Fakir's a pretty solid L horse. And uh, he, he, he looks a horse going places. You'd be very disappointed if you can't get it done tomorrow. Should we be all getting stuck into him before Saturday for the champion hurdle? Yeah, the champion hurdle is interesting as well because outside a classical dream, you're kind of. I, I, I know you like the say a Henderson horse that could have been on a hat trick or whatever that he can go and do it again. But still, over there, still over there, Baldy. So you're still looking for something to come through. Five year olds though. Tough. Very tough. Yeah. Poor Esport Allen struggled last year, didn't he? Well, yeah, okay, very small sample size. I, I, I could give you some other examples, but uh, yeah, they, generally I think it's best to oppose five year olds. And Nicola, that champion hurdle market, how does it bet again? Yeah, Classical Dream is the favourite. Um, and as I said, we already have Fusil Raffles in there at 12 to 1, and that price one. could. Okay. Uh, very much shortened. Could plummet. Moving on to the 335 at Wing Canton, also live on ITV4. It is the Badger Beer Silver Trophy Handicap Chase, and present man is going for a hat trick. How do Labrooks bet, Nicola? But not the favourite. White Moon just looks a very exciting chaser for Colin Tizard, priced at 11 to 2 favourite. Now, things didn't go to plan for him at the track last month. I think he was unlucky to stumble mm, after the last. Jumped a great. Yeah, he was going yeah. so well up until that point. And, um, I think Colin Tizard just said, was quoted in the Racing Post recently saying, you know, there's going to be no issues like that this time around. And punters have listened to him because he's definitely the most popular in the market. Present man going for a hat trick, priced at 7 to 1. His trusty companion, Bryony Frost, is on board. But he's gone up in the weights, and I think the ground may not be exactly ideal for him. So I'd be willing to take Present Man on. The weather suggests, you know, there's going to be plenty of juice in the ground. That's going to suit Lil Rockefeller, who's in there at 8 to 1. He jumps very well, and I think he could. Put it up to White Moon. Eight to one, you've got Give Me a Copper. Things didn't go to plan for him last season. He didn't end it on a good note, and I just think he's too inconsistent for me. But um, at eight to one, I think Harry Fry's Just a Sting might be worth looking at, just because he's going to like the ground and the track, and he goes well fresh. 
Excellent. So it's just a sting for Nicola McGeady from Labrox. Now I'm going to get in here first, Brendan, because I know we fancy the same horse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell everybody what's going to win the race, yes. and then you're going to explain why it's going to win the race, okay? okay? So give me a copper, wins the 335 at Wincanton, live on ITV4 on Saturday. It's always great to back a big handicap winner. Give me copper is going to win this, and Brendan Duke is going to tell you why. Well, I think it's just very hard to shake the memory of the way he dominated the Sandown fence. The Sandown, one of the toughest jumping tests in the game. Didn't work out afterwards, but I backed him in Cheltenham when he, when he came down. I thought he ran all right now in Sandown. I, 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 I was disappointed I backed him, but I, I still Me thought too. he... I still thought, I thought he, he ran all right. He's a horse with plenty of upside. He looks well handicapped, and Harry Cobden will be riding him. <laughs> Harry Cobden on a good jumper. Oh, sweet Jehovah. Watch out. This is going to be some display of jumping. Give me a copper. Four words. Don't forget them on Saturday at 3.35. Brian, yeah. has Brendan Duke convinced you? I, yeah, he actually did, because I, I kind of was half looking at him, and I was kind of worried about the, the whole Nicholas horse that seemed to be needing to run a bit. But, um, yeah, he, he was the one that I really liked, and... I'm going to probably just side him with you two because you're such good judges. Oh, thanks very much, Brian. You almost <laughs> said that with a straight face. Uh, so it's three votes for Gimme a Copper and Nicola is out on her own with just a sting. So we've got cracking action all over the place on Saturday. Um, we've got the rest of Nace, obviously Wincanton, Aintree. Brian, what have you come up with for us? Um, I have something for you. That's all right. Take your time. Okay, right. And Nace, I mean, what a weekend. Um, Paul well, it's Nolan. It's just one day now. It's just Saturday. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Nolan. I mean, he's had a brilliant start to the season. Yes, Five yeah. winners in the last uh, of, uh, the last two weeks. Um, and I think a lot of them were first time out as well, which shows mm. that they're all, all firing at home. Monolino in the 140. Now, this is a horse who's probably tested my patience before in the past, a few times over fences and over hurdles. Probably hasn't won as much as he has, or he should have. Did he turn it Galway last time? Um, he's coming in here off a bit of a break, isn't oh, is he? he? Not? Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Monlino, yeah, I mean, he really wants heavy ground. So if there's any rain, which hopefully there will be, in the 140, he's going to be a good each way bet, I think. And Longhouse Poet, I mean, he mightn't be a betting proposition in that 250. He's going to be a really exciting horse for Martin Brazel, who's got a lot of exciting horses mm. this season. And this is a point-to-point -point winner and a punch and bumper winner. And uh, I know he's got Colm of Fire against him in that 250, but he is an exciting horse, Longhouse Poet. Brilliant. Uh, Nicola, anything you like on Saturday? I've given you what I like on Saturday. That's I'll fine. give you my treble in a while. Okay. Well, I wait with bated breath. Nothing outside the races we've spoken about. Excellent. Just give them plenty. Come Brendan on. Duke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, the 215 and ace, Arctic Light. This looks thrown in back over fences. We'll just have to produce a reasonably competent round of jumping, which I think you Often can... well backed. Arctic Light, yeah. Is he? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Well, uh, I, I mean, he's going to go in a fairly short price, but I thought he'd win. One, one maybe for those multiples. And the 205 and entry, Sapage. Uh, Sapage has a formidable record. For, uh, Don't talk to me. Have I, I, I've told you the story, have I? Oh, this is a pure. Go on, continue. I thought you were, I thought you were uh, taking the mic on. No, not at all. But he's a, he's a really good record, fresh, uh, fresh, talented horse, and there's no Froden to worry about this time. So I thought he'd be able to take care of you. So uh, I am working at Chatham next weekend. One of my favourite races of the whole year is the Bet Victor Gold Cup. Obviously, um, it's won a, a real good handicap. And studied the race for about five or six hours the other day. Came up with Sepage. Yes, that's an obvious race from actually. Yeah, told a lot of people about it. A lot of people backed the horse. Oh dear. And he turns up at Aintree on Saturday. Yeah. It was gut wrenching. I don't blame you actually. Yeah, that would have been the obvious race from. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But hopefully compensation Five will or erase. Five six hours. That's the bit that shocked me the most. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's my job, I suppose. <laughs> Do you know? Uh, okay, so it's time for our Saturday banker, Brendan Duke. Give me a copper. Three thirty-five. Win Canton. Nicola McGeady. I'm going to go with just a sting. Brian Sheeran. I'm going to go each way Monlino Lino in the 140 at Nice. Excellent. There we go. That is your Saturday banker. So moving on to Sunday and all roads lead to Proudstown Park in Navan where we see the return of Apple Shade in the Les Mullen Hurdle at 105. It's a grade two race and I'm guessing she is going to be very short, Nicola. Obviously we don't yeah. have prices yet, but... but Long odds on. I would say around two to five, possibly even shorter. How could she not be? She's a 10 time grade one winner and is the standout here. She's won the last two renewals of the race and Elliot got a season off to a great start. Brendan, how should we be remembering Apple's Jade? Is she an absolute superstar? Has she just been found out at the last couple of Chapman festivals? How should we be like, what way should we be describing her? 
Yeah, well, I think she's perhaps a victim of the spring-centric nature of the national home season because if you remember her, her display in the... Her, Hatton's Grace. Hatton's Grace last year. I mean, that was one of the most devastating mm. displays you've ever seen. How far did she win? She, she went 20 lengths or something. Oh, yeah. More even, yeah. And, I mean, it was just a relentless display of galloping and jumping. So, but unfortunately, of course, the season is geared towards Cheltenham and the Spring Festivals. Uh, so she's going to suffer. But, but, but I will remember her in our prime in the winter before reproductive issues kick in and Brian you've seen Apple Shade in the flesh a couple of times how is she looking this year she looks a picture she's um she's her typical self I was going to say something there but I caught myself uh, they always say when she's on her own song she's um typical mare to be around you know yeah hard hard to manage that's when she's at her best but she seems to be at that oh, I saw it. <laughs> yeah so I saw her on the gallops there a couple of times in Elliot's recently the one thing I'm a bit worried about Gordon keeps saying, which is funny for an eight, a seven-year-old mare, rising eight, that she's not getting any younger. Now, I know she was uh, one of those um, juvenile herders come mm. up through the ranks and all that, but she's only seven. Like, why is he saying this already? Is he seeing something that we're not seeing at the home of the Gallops? Obviously, maybe it's... But look, she's nothing to beat here on Sunday. Um, I'd be surprised if she didn't win, and then that'll tear up nicely to go for the Hatton's Grace, which is going for four in a row. Quick, quick quiz question. She was second in trying for What won it? Um, don't tell me. Come on. Um, come on. Don't, it's won one race since I think Brendan Duke it was the horse of Joseph well Joseph was supposed to train it but Ivanovich Ivanovich Corbett that's right there we go uh, you would have got there in the end Brian I we probably didn't have to <laughs> on Monday but um, <laughs> moving on to the 210 at Navin is the Toe.com for 3 h eight. it's a grade 2 we're hoping to see do, do about. we thought we might see Min unfortunately we see neither and instead it's Racing Post Arca winner Duke de Geneva um, Nicola again I'd imagine this will be short but it's a decent race. You've got Bally O'Sheen in there, and there's a few potential dangers to Duke to Geneva. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take a stab at pricing it. I rang our trader earlier on today. He said, just wait, have a bit of patience. It'll be up later on today. But yeah, you're right. Duke to Geneva will be short favourite. Uh, Brendan Duke, I think you backed the Plutara Cheltenham, am I right? No, I didn't. Um, I, 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 I backed a cliff horse of mine that... Um, he... Riders of the Storm. That's though. correct. The memory I we know. got in together yeah yeah he's, he's actually entered <laughs> yeah the entered at the weekend yeah, yeah absolutely yeah but uh apu tar duke to geneva bali O'Sheen, hardline dr phoenix yes will duke to geneva be favorite given a pound to apu tar i would say apu tar would be favorite i would have thought mm. so i, I know it's uh, perhaps a suboptimal trip but two miles on heavy ground and lavin i mean this is just relentless stuff so i thought apu tar should be favorite and he would probably be my selection in the race excellent brian sheeran I kind of, um, I thought Apple Tower was the most interesting coming back in trip, but I, I really couldn't come down with that selection if I'm being totally honest. That's all right, Brian, no, no, we won't push it. Um, obviously, there's, there's a really good supporting card at Navin, and at 2.25 at Sandown, we've got the Future Stars Novice Chase, which sees Santini taking on Talk is Cheap. Brian, anything you like on Sunday? Yeah, um, Abacadabra in the four auction, the 12.35. Now, Gordon said he doesn't have many speedy novice hurdlers, which is probably not a huge surprise given Gigginson and Modus Operandi is to buy big, massive three-mile chasers for the future. But Abacadabra is one of those speedy novices. He was a very good bumper horse last year, and I think he'd be hard to beat in the 12.35, the four auction novice hurdle. Uh, Andy Dufresne runs in the 1.35, the two-mile. Big mile. reputation. Big reputation. Point to point and bumper winner. Was meant to run during the week at Ferry House. was called off. Uh, he's obviously probably not going to be a betting proposition, but my God, is he exciting. And the 315, I hope I'm not stealing everyone's uh, horses that they're going to talk about, but the 315, Mellon goes over fences. Uh, you got um, Fakir Duderi, who, who Joseph thinks is a, an Arkle or even a JLT horse. And in the bumper, another horse that Gordon was keen on in his stable tour is Fakir Dalam. He won his point to point and he cost 160k afterwards so I mean he could be he's actually already quoted in some markets for the champion bumper so uh, Jamie Codrides Jamie Codrides yeah. okay yeah. excellent so there's a few from Brian Shearer and Fert Navin on Sunday Brendan Duke do you like anything on Sunday couple for you David 255 stand down totter down first run for Fergal O'Brien probably a trainer upgrade and as Brian has already mentioned has the horses going really well not handicapped out of this race I thought he was interesting and in the 1205 Bay Ambition what do you do about this Gavin Cromwell so I looked at his horse in the November handicap last week. First, first run for Gavin Cromwell. So you're always interested in those. It doesn't handle deep ground. Well, it didn't. And I, exposed. I, I, and it was exposed until it went to Gavin Cromwell. The man's an absolute magician. Uh, this Bay ambition is not exposed. 
Looks like she'll handle the step up and trip. And I thought even on the bare form for Dan Patrick win, the handicapper had been relatively kind to her. So I thought she'd take plenty of beat. And just this, this crumb. I'm not telling anyone, people anything they don't know, but Cromwell, watch out. What a man. What a man. Okay, so now it's time for our three for the weekend. Brendan Duke, your three best bets of the weekend. Yes, very Cobden centric. 225 win Canton. If you say run, 335 win Canton. Give me a copper. And the 205 in Aintree might be running in the wrong race, but will be winning. Stepage. Nicola McGeady, your three for the weekend. The 225 win Canton Comanche Red in the Elite Hurdle. I am going to go with the obvious one, Fusil Raffles. And, and finally, in the 335, just a sting. Excellent. Brian Sheeran. Okay, in the 225 Wing Canton, we're going to go with Reserve Tank. Then in the 140, a bigger price at Nace is Monino. That would be hard. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the Sunday, we're going to go Abacadabra in the four auction, the 1235. Okay, so two shorties and one kicker. Yeah. Excellent. So there you go, folks. That has been What's the Word in association with Labrooks for this week. My thanks to our star studded panel, Mr. Brendan Duke, Nicola McGeady, Brian Sheeran. I've been David Jennings, and thanks for watching.